All right, a uh, little update here. Quite a bit of work. Uh, I ended up dropping the skid just to kind of loosen the pressure off the drive shaft for when it does come out. Uh, so you don't actually need the puller, but it's really tight, so you're really gonna be on there. I was a little bit worried for the wall here, so I kind of took a second pry bar just to put behind, just to widen the pressure point a little bit. And uh, when you're pulling on that with a pry bar, is make sure you you grab the brake caliper bracket, not the actual bearing. I was doing that at first till I realized what the heck am I doing. So another fun little thing here is uh, removing this bracket. Not sure why, but Skidoo put this little insert with a flat spot here that sits behind here. So what you're gonna have to do, and uh, I'm telling you guys here so you guys can actually prepare ahead of time, but you're gonna need a 22 mil uh, 1 8 wrench. So I just made this from flat bar, it's 3 16 so I just grinded it on a 1 8 but you slide it underneath to retain the, the nut, then you can use the impact. So kind of a pain in the ass, but don't know why they would just thread that, they wouldn't, they wouldn't just thread something else. So like, Well, I guess it spins, but anyways, regardless, they could have put a nut. Could have put something different, but that's what they decided to do. So, just a heads up. And, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, keep chugging along though. So I just kind of noticed here while I was uh, just fitting it, uh, that the real extension isn't exactly the same as the real rail because if you line this up back where the squares are, the, uh, the bottom of this rail goes out longer you see how this there's a 45 degree here and it goes down well this one has a 45 degree and then it's missing about two and a half inches of uh of rails so i'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen um i think i'll just try these and worst case scenario i'll have to take the grinder to them i'll just uh cut all the way down this 45 here follow this line all the way down and then uh, same thing at the top to remove this section if it's uh if it's deemed problematic with the 146, but I can't see how it wouldn't be if that's how the 137 was built. So uh, these are coming out all the way here. Yeah, I really do think that we're gonna have to cut these. All right guys, sorry, put you guys on the charger there. looks like I'll need a second GoPro battery before the, the riding season this year. But anywho, so the extensions are on. Um, I do have a couple things to say about these things. Um, they're very well made. Other than the issue with the the whole slider is being a bit longer here, I, I, I figured about two and a half inches. Um, other than that, well, they gave me hardware with the kit, so you get everything you need. Um, you think you get everything you need, but turns out this is American, right? Trax USA, so pretty clear American. These bolts aren't metric. Uh, Skidoo's made in Canada, so everything is metric. These blocks here, they give you these screws. Not sure why or what they're thinking, but they give you imperial, imperial screws. So I ended up recycling these. I still have a, about a probably quarter inch, quarter inch to uh, 5 16 of thread engage, engagement, so I figured it's fine as long as these are tight, right? Because that's what holds your the whole tension back there. Uh, so, other than that, it's, uh, it's a pretty easy install. What I ended up doing is they only have two holes that are lined up, right? So what I did is I took the, the one from the other side, I put it up against this side because you can't drill from this side because this other rail's in the way. So, so you take the opposite rail extension, you put it in front, and, and then I, you know, I, I marked all my centers with the, the right size drill bit, uh, drilled all my holes, so you have to drill four more holes. Um, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and I took it off, finished drilling them, and uh, installed her. Other than that, uh, it went pretty good. Installed the slider also. And All right, so I got the old bearing out here. Um, this is the old dude right here. So for that, I mean, I don't have a shop here, just a regular garage. So all it is, I use a cold chisel and uh, just kind of hit the inner race slowly all around try to balance as much as you can because if you go crooked then you'll you're gonna jam it up right so uh just kind of take your time as you get to the end it, it gets like a lot looser especially like uh, the last half inch so as <coughs> excuse me it probably took me about uh, 10 minutes to get it off so just take your time you'll get it and uh, putting the new one back in again i don't have a brand press so what i did is i just put it in it went almost all the way um uh, actually hold on sorry 
Make sure you clean it up before, right? I, I just scratched it with some sandpaper just to get all the dirt and stuff off, no rust, so it goes in a lot better and you don't really want to put it on with rust, right? So uh, you put the O-ring in as well. This is the old one. Mine is just a sandwich behind there. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, I just push it in as, as far as I could. Then I took a piece of wood and make sure you're hitting on the inner race here, right? Because you don't want to be hitting the outer race and then you can, uh, you can scrub the bearing before it goes in, so. Uh, again, you gotta do side by side, top and down, whatever. Just make sure it goes in straight and uh, tap it in all the way. And uh, Bob's your uncle. It's uh, not very hard. All right, we're at 60% charge here, so I can probably keep going with the time lapse. Um, so I took out this bearing inside the chain case. Same deal with this one. Uh, one thing, don't forget to take out the return clip, like I was trying to do at first, till I realized there is a return clip. So I'll take that out. Just flat screwdriver, pretty easy. Comes out real good. Uh, and then just kind of go tap it out from the underneath with, uh, again, your good old reliable cold chisel. Um, you don't really have to worry about damaging much, obviously, other than your chain case itself. So just have that around the bearing. Um, you have your bearing and your seal sitting in, in this uh, pocket right here. So anyways, that's pretty much it for my, uh, my disassembly. I'm going to... I'm gonna insert my seal and then my bearing. Again, just kind of slowly tap it in. I'm gonna use a piece of lumber just to, to not have steel on steel. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll do that and then I'll probably just keep going with the time lapse and uh, film the rest. All right, one more thing I kind of wanted to cover <coughs> is uh, the bearing code. So I just wrote on my wall here, but uh, just for your reference, if you're looking to do this job on your own sled, it's the 6010 2RS bearing, so you could probably pick it up at your local shop at Maslack or whatever. Um, I bought the kit. The kit was 35 bucks. Um, I'm not sure what their the seals and the O-rings are priced out at. So the O-ring, this is the, the number from Skidoo. Um, you'd have to check it out if it's even worth, you know, buying this individually. I don't know. You probably gotta charge you an arm and a leg for seal and o-ring because that's what they usually do um, the bearings are probably like five bucks at your local bearing shop so, yeah, be worth to check out all right so uh it was a tough go but we got her on uh, i gotta see if you can get a second pair of hands it's a lot easier for this uh, you see i flipped it on its side there it's a little bit easier to align the first hole and then uh Vice versa on the other side, and I finished the other one off with the uh, with a jack. Um, I've used ratchet straps in the past. Like I said, four people or two people's ideal. Four hands on there is a little bit a little bit easier. Even getting the thing in isn't the easiest thing ever. You got all these darn lugs on the inside, right? But uh, you just keep jiggling it. It's frustrating, but you'll get it in. Probably pinch your fingers a couple times like I did, but it's all good. It's worth it. Um. Don't forget to put the drain plug back in. That uh, was important. For a chain, what they say is you basically want to be able to move it a full width. So basically half a width on one side and half a width on the other side. So you should be able to see the same spot behind it both times, right? So that's pretty much what we got here. Um, uh, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on doing that. Like probably pushing about uh, five pounds, you know, like not... Nothing, nothing too much here. Uh, another thing is, they say when you, as a rule of thumb, when you add a quarter inch of paddle, you're supposed to drop a top tooth. Um, I had done this. This uh, this sled came with a forty-five twenty-one off the assembly line. And without changing anything else, I changed the top gear to a 19 just to try to reduce uh, belt life or reduce belt usage, right? So it's uh, you got a bit more mechanical advantage in there, so your belt's working a bit less because it's seeing less torque. So I did that, and I had done it on a previous sled, and logically you think you change your your ratio uh, means your motor's going to be able to spin more because it's easier, so you think you're over revving, right? So what I had done on my old sled, which was, by the way, a 2010 Renegade Backcountry, all I had done is change my primary spring for, uh, it was a green spring available at Royal Distributing, their, their, their color coded, right? I forget what they, basically, like, you get a bottom number and a top number, and they both represent your engagement and then your top RPM. Um, you'll have to do the science and, and calculate the, the RPMs, but whatever, but anyways... 
I had figured out what I needed. I had ordered the green green spring, so I did the same thing for this. I ordered the, the sprocket and the spring. So when I put it on, when I first got the sled, well, maybe a few months after, whatever, I figured I'll go for a spin, try it out before. And sure enough, my RPMs were bang on, so didn't know what happened, but whatever, I just figured I'd ride it like that because everything was good. So now I have the right gearing for this track uh, with no idea how it's gonna react. So we'll have to kind of ride it preseason a little bit, see if we get our RPMs up. And if not, we'll have to change our clutching, uh, drop the weights a little bit or vice versa, I forget. Anyways, whatever. I'm not a clutching guru, but uh, yeah. Track, I kind of forget what they, what they recommend. I have a general idea, but I think I'll, I'll probably just lift it up and uh, look in the manual, check it out. I don't. I know it's it's with a, either a puller or a set of weights and you're supposed to get a certain amount, so. Plus this is brand new, so it's most likely gonna stretch a little bit, so we'll see. I'll probably set it up properly there just to get more life out of it, right? Other than that, don't forget to tighten these guys. Take off the tension off your, your rear blocks. Um, the issue with the uh, the extensions being a bit longer, I think we'll be okay. I mean, this is spinning forward when there's a lot of torque going through it, and in reverse, realistically, the wheel is the ra wheel radius is still lower than where this catches, and it is on an angle hits the metal clip, so I really don't think it's going to be an issue. I'm still not sure why they do that, but regardless, it's in there. We'll be good. It's going to ride. So, don't matter. Uh, yeah, all I got to do left now is uh, put the cover back on and drain the oil and I think that's going to be it for tonight. We got everything we wanted to, to do, so we got it all done. And then tomorrow is going to be uh, the rest, basically clean up and install all the nitty gritty. Alright guys, that concludes it for today. Um, just to sum it up, we, uh, we put all the... Uh, Chain case cover bolts back on. I, like I said, I had stripped one here, so I just ended up putting a nut. Now, if you're gonna strip one, you definitely wanna be stripping this one. Uh, but, you know, don't strip any. But it does happen, sometimes there's a fault. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's cast aluminum, so sometimes you get air pockets. It's not the best stuff, but so it does happen. Like, uh, you know, you could be, you could be uh, stripping this one and it's barely even tight, and then this one goes really tight. You know, it's all, it's kind of hit and miss, unfortunately. But. So anyways, we got that back in. Uh, I put some oil in. Don't forget to put your cap. And again, don't forget to put your plug before you do that. That's, uh, or else you're just gonna have to, you know, get another bottle of oil. Not the end of the world, but I'm sure we've all done that at least once. I haven't done it yet though, knock on wood. Uh, yeah, so part one of the 146 uh, free ride expert. Um, I'm just thinking I might have to get some new stickers made for that 137 there, or you just buy the the Skidoo 146 and the right expert or something just for fun, you know. So, kind of thought this was gonna happen with the track. I think what I'll do is, uh, well, regardless, I'm putting the removable one, but when I do need it for the odd ride, I think I'll probably just cut it like right here, anyway, so it doesn't hit. It might. Hit a couple times when I hit bumps, but I don't know. I'll figure something out. We'll see where it goes with the uh, with that removable. Maybe it'll be standing out a little bit more. Who knows? Yeah, worked out good. I'm happy with the look. With the rails, you can't really tell it's extended. Like it's uh, you, you you have to know to see it right. Like you can tell there's a few more bolts and stuff, but all in all, it's good. So yeah, tomorrow we're gonna start with the cleanup and uh, putting all the air vents basically. So hopefully that goes well. This job went really well, um, especially for, like I said, the first time taking out, taking a drive shaft out of this model. Um, it's been said before and I, confirm, I can confirm that and it's the, definitely the easiest sled to do once you know, uh, simply because you don't need a puller for the brake caliper and that's a big bonus right there. So yeah, thanks for watching guys.